The list of names of coach the Washington Commanders grew shorter on Wednesday, but there are still good options left. That and more on today's mailbag episode of Locked On Commanders. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome into this episode of Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. And don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this podcast. And you can continue this conversation by becoming a Locked On Commanders insider. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders. And from there, you'll get inside information, exclusive content, scoops, opinions, analysis, all kinds of fun going on with me. One-on-one conversations via text message. No hashtags, no apps, no timelines, no scrolling. It's all right there in the palm of your hands. Again, go to joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders to become an insider today. I'm David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington commanders for commandercountry.com, a part of Sports Illustrated Fan Nation. I'm here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers. And as always, I appreciate your continued support for the show. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, we finally get to our mailbag. It's a day later because of all the news going on, but we get to our mailbag. We're going to talk about uh, some details about when you hire a coach, when can the coach start, when can the coach uh, start officially working for the organization, a question about draft trades now that some of the top uh, quote unquote uh, coach targets are gone and who could come along with some of these head coach options that are remaining. So we're going to talk about all that stuff. A really fun episode. I had a lot of fun planning this episode. But first, we do have to talk about the fact that the pool of candidates for the Washington Commanders to pull from for their next head coach is getting more and more shallow by the day. First, Detroit Lions offensive coordinator Ben Johnson decides to stay in Detroit. Then Houston Texans offensive coordinator Bobby Sloak decides to stay in Houston. And now Baltimore Ravens defensive coordinator Mike McDonald is heading to the Seattle Seahawks. And by the time I get record, get done recording this episode, publishing it, who knows what else is going to happen uh, that's going to change the uh, entire landscape. But basically, your top three targets, our top three targets uh, here on the program for most of this process are now gone. Raheem Morris, uh, the Los Angeles Rams defensive coordinator, now former, now head coach of the Atlanta Falcons, at one point was in that top three as well. He is gone. So really, if you go through it, the top three or four candidates from our program, this entire coaching period, uh, are now no longer available for one reason or another. Two of them have new jobs. Two of them have decided to stick with the current job that they have. But there are still plenty of candidates. And I talked about this every day, as you'll remember. I told you guys in the beginning of this process that there are more good coaching candidates than there are available jobs. And that hasn't changed. So the Washington Commanders, even though we all have our favorites, right? I know a lot of people really hooked on Ben Johnson. And then from there, a lot of people really hooked on Bobby Silk. A lot of people were really hooked on Mike McDonald. You all know Mike McDonald, every dares, you know, Mike McDonald was my top candidate this entire time. He was the number one guy that I wanted to see the Washington commanders bring in, but it doesn't mean there aren't good candidates still out there for the Washington commanders to pull from. So it's not time to panic is really the point, right? I see some people going the route of, man, it's just like the old regime or man, it's just like the same old commanders can't ever get anything right. And look, I understand the disappointment in not getting your favorite guy or maybe not getting the guy that the media is dubbing like the next great head coach in the national football league. But there was a commanders fan that actually pointed out to some other fans. And I think it's really well, uh, it's really smart to point out Joe Gibbs wasn't Joe Gibbs when he got hired by Washington, right? Joe Gibbs became Joe Gibbs. So uh, again, and Bill Belichick, I mean, you look at the way Bill Belichick got that New England Patriots job, taking the Jets job, and then suddenly turning coat and saying, you know what, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go to a division rival there. I mean, I, I, you know, as much as Jets fans probably hated that moment or hate him for that moment, there, I promise you, just think about people, there were Patriots fans going, hold up, this dude is willing to turn his back on an organization that he committed to at the snap of a finger and come over here What's going to stop him from doing the same thing to us and didn't like the hire because of those reasons. So, you know, look, Josh McDaniel was supposed to be like the next great coach, you know, the, the, the great Bill Belichick tree uh, prodigy. He not only flamed out in one area, he flamed out in two teams and then completely bailed on another, uh, you know, after a whole bunch of disasters going on there with Indianapolis. So you, you really never know what is going to happen with a coaching tenure. So uh, absolutely. We have our favorites. 
but let's not get too, too carried away. Now there's three candidates I want to bring up uh, that are still available and are still, they still bring their own level of uh, positivity. And I'm going to kind of break them down one way. And then I'm going to give you my top three, my new locked on commanders, top three coaching candidates for the Washington commanders. But we're going to start off here with the most polarizing candidate left. And that is Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn, who would, if he comes in, presumably bring an even front defense with him. So the Washington commanders roster kind of already built for an even front defense. He would bring in that even front defense as well. Certainly put his own style, his own twist to it, uh, all those things. But you would expect an even front defense out of Dan Quinn. He's the retread. He's the guy who coached, you know, know, he's been the head coach with the Atlanta Falcons fairly recently, right? Respectably uh, recently started off his tenure with Matt Ryan, the veteran quarterback kind of put in place there. I was able to lead that team to one Super Bowl appearance, the infamous 28 to three debacle uh, loss to the New England Patriots. And so a lot of people remember that. And then, of course, you know, like a lot of coaching tenures do kind of fizzled out towards the end, ends up getting fired. A lot of people don't want to bring him in because the thought process with retreads tends to be he's just going to come and do the things he did in Atlanta, but try to do them better. And you and you don't want that. You want something new. Well, that's the question is, is Dan Quinn going to try to come in and do what he did in Atlanta? Just do it better like Ron Rivera did coming from Carolina. Just do the same thing you did there. Just do it better here. Or is he a guy who's going to learn from his mistakes and say, I now I understand where I went wrong in Atlanta. Here's where I need to pivot and change moving forward into my next job. If that's the case, then you assume that's the decision that's being made there for that reason. The most intriguing uh, candidate, Detroit Lions defensive coordinator, Aaron Glenn. And I've kind of floated this on social media. I've talked to some, some buddies of mine about this especially if he can bring Lions offensive line coach who uh, is supposed to be Ben Johnson's offensive coordinator. If he got a job, Hank Fraley. Now Ben Johnson decided to return to Detroit. I don't know how tied at the hip Hank Fraley and Ben Johnson are, but Aaron Glenn has been on that, on that staff uh, along with Ben Johnson, along with Hank Fraley, who says that Hank Fraley says, you know what, man, like Ben, I applaud you for not being, you know, not wanting to jump ship and not want to go get a head coaching job and want to see this thing through. But I want to be an offensive coordinator because I want to be a head coach someday myself. So I'm going to go ahead and take this job. Not saying it would happen, but that would be a pretty big get. If you bring Aaron Glenn over from the Lions and he can bring Hank Fraley from the Lions to be his offensive coordinator, that'd be a pretty big uh, get. If Aaron Glenn comes over, you're getting an even front defense again. Um, And I'm kind of like speculating maybe Cowboys secondary and passing game coordinator Joe Witt Jr. to come over to be his DC. So you get a little bit of that Cowboys defense flavor, Aaron Glenn's Lions defense flavor, and then you get the Lions offensive flavor out of Hank Fraley would be very interesting. Uh, trio of coaches there if they made that happen then finally most likely to be ignored because of his current position Anthony Weaver the assistant head coach slash defensive line coach uh, for the Baltimore Ravens look coordinator is the sexy word right coordinator is the trigger word you hear coaching candidate usually it's this team's offensive coordinator this team's defensive coordinator it's not usually uh, an assistant head coach defensive line coach and a lot of people I've actually had some people say to me why are they interviewing a position coach to be a head coach well it's because he's also the assistant head coach So he's doing some of those duties uh, for Coach Harbaugh there in Baltimore, taking a little bit off his plate. How much of it? I don't know. I can't tell you. That's what the interview process is for. But I can tell you, shout out to my buddy Candy Waller of Seawall Bowie TV. She actually shared with me a tweet from Diana Rossini, who reported on Anthony Weaver's uh, uh, interview with the Washington Commanders and pointed out that they spoke for hours and it went really well. Seems to go really well. Really, the only candidate here, if you think about it, whose interview was reported to go that long. Doesn't mean that others didn't go well, but Anthony Weaver's conversation with the Washington Commanders certainly seemed to go well. And there's a lot to like here about Coach Weaver. Uh, Baltimore, he's been with Baltimore from 2021 to now, 2023, obviously very successful defenses there. Uh, Coach Houston from 2016 to 2020, got an AFC title, the AFC South title there in 2019. Coach J.J. Watt, Jadavian Clowney in 2018. Second most tackles in NFL or in franchise history for Houston in 2017. The NFL's top ranked defense in 2016. Uh, you know, he was hired from Houston to Baltimore. So obviously, you know, Baltimore saw something in him. It wasn't like a coaching change. He came with them. No, this was Harbaugh looking at someone else's staff and saying, I want that guy on my staff uh, and brought him over. Uh, he was with Cleveland before that. They had a number one opponent passer rating in 2014. Buffalo before that had a franchise record, 57 sacks on that defense in 2013. And the only team in 2013 to have three players reach double digit sacks. And oh, by the way, Coach Weaver was the D line coach uh, on that team. So uh, that was, you know, part of his work right there. Probably looking at an odd front defense. I know a lot of Commanders fans out there have kind of wanted to see this team switch to an odd front defense, 3 4, if you want to call it that. So 
interesting targets out there. Again, like I said, the pool is not depleted. It may be a little less crowded, but is not depleted. My new top three, my number one guy is Anthony Weaver, assistant head coach, defensive line coach for the Baltimore Ravens. My second guy, Aaron Glenn, Detroit Lions defense coordinator. Dan Quinn is number three. So the sky is not falling. And despite our excitement about some of the candidates that are now gone, there's nothing that guarantees any of them would have been successful. So what we do now, we go through the process, trust the process, trust the decision makers. I'm telling you from seeing and talking to these guys up close, this process is being done the right way. We'll find out if the plan itself is going to work. But right now, all we can focus on is it's being done the right way. I think that is valuable. But who could come with any of these three candidates? That's coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. At the start of the new year, every small business owner is asking themselves the same exact question. What is the one move that I, as that small business owner, can make to take my small business to the next level in 2024? And LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success all depends on the team that you surround yourself with. And that is why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And this isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. And that is why small businesses rank LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing a lot of hats and may not have all the resources at their fingertips. So thankfully with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and it's easy. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Today's episode is also brought to you by DoorDash. Why root for your favorite team on an empty stomach? Order on DoorDash and save on football, basketball, baseball, whatever it is. Watch party favorites. You can order pizza, wings, sodas, burgers, or even just buns. If that's all you have, you forgot the buns, so you need those. Order them on DoorDash and get it all without delivery or get it all delivered rather without missing the game. Score the best deals on groceries, restaurants, retail, and more. All of your favorite restaurants and stores from retail to grocery are on the app. So you shop everything you need to get game day ready. If you want to get prepared before game day, stock up on your favorite appetizers and order all your tailgate gear on DoorDash. Then just get ready to watch your favorite team win the game. Get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter the code LOCKED23. Subject to change, terms apply. Don't forget to use that code Locked 23 for 50% off up to a $10 value on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and spend $15 or more. Subject to change, terms apply. Thanks again for being a Locked On Commanders, your first listener, your first view today and every day, every day. Just make sure you come back tomorrow. We got another episode. Also, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel. So make sure you check that out. Locked On Sports Today is here for you on YouTube 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Now we're going to move on here and we are going to hit the mailbag. It's our first ever insider voice question on our mailbag episode. This one coming from Daniel. Hey, David. This is Daniel from Virginia. Um, The question that I have is... Out of the three candidates, who do you believe will bring the best personnel over to Washington? So this could be the player personnel or the coaches and the players that will become free agents who can help um, implement whatever scheme they have in mind for the team who would bring the best personnel over. All right, Daniel. Appreciate that call, Daniel. And yeah, looking at people that each of these three candidates could bring over with them. We're going to start off with Anthony Weaver. Again, after we restack, reshuffle these candidates, Anthony Weaver comes away as my number one candidate. That's the guy that if I had the option, if I was telling Josh Harris and Adam Peters who to go get, I'm telling you to go get Anthony Weaver. Defensive coordinator for him, I'm bringing Baltimore Ravens pass game coordinator and secondary coach Chris Hewitt. For offensive coordinator, I'm looking at a guy that maybe we haven't talked about a lot, 49ers offensive pass game specialist. Clint Kubiak to come be 
the offensive coordinator. So we're getting that Ravens defense. We're getting that Niners front office experience. And now we're getting some Niners offense experience. Another piece of that Shanahan tree. And in the free agent pool, I'm looking at Baltimore Ravens, unrestricted free agents, linebacker, Patrick Queen, the dude had 17 starts this season, three and a half sacks, 133 tackles. He was a pro bowler. He was an all pro uh, second team member. You pay him that money. You bring Patrick Queen to the DMV, well, to D.C. And I'm also looking at defensive tackle Justin Matabuke. Matabuke, uh, 17 starts, 13 sacks, a Pro Bowl berth, all-pro second-team member as well. Defensive end Jadavion Clowney, finally, 15 starts, nine and a half sacks. Uh, and look, Coach Weaver coached with him, with Jadavion Clowney in Houston, and he obviously coached him in Baltimore, so there's a lot of experience there. Former Ravens defensive coordinator, now Seattle Seahawks head coach Mike McDonald. He's probably going to want some of his old players, too. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks currently negative in 2024 cap space. Now you can free up some money. Don't get me wrong. So that's not to say they're no threat, but the Washington commanders certainly have a lot more firepower in the salary cap situation to go out there and make these deals. Um, and then as far as the Baltimore Ravens retaining these guys, they've got about $5 million in cap space. Uh, looking now at our second option, Aaron Glenn, Detroit Lions defensive coordinator. He comes over, becomes the head coach. Uh, I think Lions linebacker coach Kelvin Shepard could be a really good candidate for Aaron Glenn to bring with him to be his defensive coordinator. And then offensive coordinator, Lions assistant head coach and running backs coach, Scotty Montgomery. So first segment, I mentioned Hank Fraley, right? And I certainly mean that and everything, but if my intuition is correct and Hank Fraley is kind of like, nah, you know, I'm going to roll with Ben Johnson for at least one more year before I jump ship. Then I think uh, Lions assistant head coach, running backs coach, Scotty Montgomery could be a, a very serviceable offensive coordinator. Uh, looking at free agents from the Lions organization, defensive tackle Benito Jones is one that's kind of interesting. 15 starts this season, had a sack. He's a pass rushing interior lineman, 19 total regular season pressures, uh, ranked top 60 in the league. On the offensive side of things, you can go guard Jonah Jackson. He's at 57 career starts in four years. In the NFL, he's a Pro Bowler in 2021. Solid blocker uh, could help you stave off the need to go after a high round guard in this year's NFL draft. Or if you get one, you know, say third round, fourth round, something like that, gives you a guy to lean on a little bit while you while you uh, develop that guy uh, behind him. Probably not, you know, your starter for the next five years, but you know, next year or two certainly could be a guy to fill that hole. And then you got to be interested in, in the tandem of defensive end and linebacker Romeo Aquara, Aquara and Julian Aquara, right? So the brothers from the Detroit Lions defense, uh, both are role players, both have experience in the scheme, the language. They know what's expected from the coaching staff, and they both work on two levels of the defense. So you've got guys in the defensive line room. You also got a guy in the linebacker room. So to me, that's really interesting. And then Dan Quinn, finally, uh, his defensive coordinator. I'm looking at Cowboys secondary and defensive pass game coordinator, Joe Witt Jr. Uh, he's a very intriguing coach that, honestly, if this team got an offensive coach, he would have been one of the guys that I kind of identified as a potential def or offensive coordinator or sorry, defense coordinator candidate uh, as well. But maybe Dan Quinn brings him over. Joe Witt gets to be the defensive coordinator here in Washington. And offensive coordinator, you know what? A lot of people are going to be upset if Dan Quinn's the head coach, right? Let's go ahead and make Eric Bieniemy the offensive co coordinator. Let's go ahead and let AB have another opportunity. Dan Quinn, he's focusing on making sure he learns from the lessons uh, that he's learned. Team effort. Adam Peters expects it. Josh Harris expects it. If Eric Bieniemy sold in, you got to understand, EB, it's a team effort here. We're all in this together. It's not just what EB wants. It's not just what Dan wants. It's not just what Adam wants. It's not just what Josh wants. It's what's best for the team. If EB is on board, EB can be a very dangerous man uh, when he's in, the, he's in the right mind space, right? So, uh, this is kind of the, if we're going to ruffle feathers, man, let's ruffle all of them and just keep EB as the offensive coordinator. Uh, that would be a trip. I, I love talking to EB. So I would, I would not, I would not hate talking to Eric Bianami for another year. Believe me. Uh, running back Tony Pollard is a free agent. The Dallas Cowboys have that could be interesting 15 or more games every season since 2019. And he was a 1300 plus yard back this year from scrimmage. So that's total offense. Uh, and it had a 50 and had a career high 55 receptions for the Cowboys would pair very nicely with Brian Robinson Jr. and Chris Rodriguez as the number three back uh, to really be your bowling ball. Defensive end Dante Fowler Jr. He worked with Dan Quinn in Atlanta. He's worked with Dan Quinn in Dallas. So certainly could see him coming over 17 games, no starts, but he still had four sacks as a, as a situational pass rusher. And then safety J. Ron Curse, 13 starts, one interception, four passes defense, one and a half sacks. He's a box safety who can also play free safety or the slot. So if you have Derek Forrest back there, if you have Cam Curl back there, if you just have the three of them kind of rotate in and out, Buffalo nickel style, all that kind of stuff, certainly a player that you could see coming over from the Dallas Cowboys. So Daniel, thank you for the question. Sparked a whole lot of research for me and I loved every minute of it. Uh, really helped me actually fall in love with Anthony Weaver as my number one 
option. So coming up next, we got some more questions. We got another voice memo coming from an insider. And then we got a YouTube question to answer on this episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, and it's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because instead of battling thousands of other players, you just pick more than or less than on two to six player stats, and then it's just you against those numbers. Prize Picks even offers a re- reboot policy so your entire entry stays in play, even if one of your players gets injured or just doesn't come back for the second half. For football and basketball games, if you have a player that exits the game in the first half, does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. You remember when Curtis Samuel got ejected in the first half of a game this year? I had him on my prize picks ticket. He did not play in the second half. He came off my list. My ticket was still valid. Prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL, all lowercase, for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that promo code locked on NFL, all lowercase, at prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL to get a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Wrapping up this episode of Locked On Commanders Mailbag episode, finally into our mailbag this week. And we got a question here from Keith coming through in a voice memo. So let's hear from insider Keith right now. Hey, David, this is Keith trying a question as an audio message. You mentioned earlier that players have to wait until the new season starts in March to become free agents. How do these rules affect coaches? I know we're looking for a new coach and we're probably going to hire him this week. And he's going to want to bring staff over from other places. Are there limits to how soon they can start working for the commanders or is this a a different thing from the players and they start working for the commanders almost immediately? Thanks for clarification. All right, Keith, thanks for coming through. Thanks for taking advantage of the voice question option uh, for today's episode. And yeah, coaches, executives, players, they all play by a different set of rules and players uh, just kind of real quickly, their contracts don't expire until the end of the league year. So you know, Washington Commanders like Curtis Samuels on expiring contract season's over. His contract is still in place until the end of the league year, which comes in March. Now, three days before the end of the league year, he's allowed to openly negotiate with other teams if he does not have a multi-year deal in place with the Washington Commanders. Now, if you have two years left on your deal and can't negotiate with anybody, you're still under contract for the following season. You're done. You ain't talking to nobody. That's tampered, right? So that's players. And if they sign a new deal, They can't report to their team. They can't officially sign that contract until 4 p.m. Eastern time on the first day of the new league year. So that's the player situation. Executives basically have no restraints. When you look at Adam Peters, Adam Peters was working for the San Francisco 49ers. Not only does he get interviewed, but he flies out to Washington to get interviewed to have dinner with Josh Harris and the decision-making group. Then he signs his contract and he comes over. By the way, the San Francisco 49ers are preparing for a playoff game, trying to win a Super Bowl. Adam Peters negotiates his deal, interviews for his deal, signs his deal, takes over a new team. He gets to work with the Washington Commanders right on day one. Uh, Meanwhile, the San Francisco 49ers are on their way to Vegas to play in the Super Bowl. I think I would hope that Adam Peters will get a ring if the Niners win this season because, you know, he was there for most of the season. But yeah, executives, they don't got to play by any of those rules. Coaches, on the other hand, if your team is still in season, so if they're a playoff team, there are certain rules. Like if you're playing the divisional round, you can only do a virtual uh, uh, interview until this day, and then you can do an in-person interview, and there's a whole lot of rules and all this stuff. And the only way that, say, a, like if you're interviewing Dan Quinn from the Dallas Cowboys, if you're trying to interview him to be your defensive coordinator, and he's a defense coordinator there, then the team that already has him can block you. They can block a lateral movement. What they can't block is a promotion, right? I had a, I had a YouTube person uh, ask me and say, why would the Dallas Cowboys allow Dan Quinn to become the head coach of the Washington Commanders? They'll just block it. Jerry Jones will just block it. Jerry Jones can only block it if it's Dan Quinn becoming the defensive coordinator for the Washington Commanders. Now, doesn't mean he will. He just could and can um, certainly have that. You know, he certainly has that right if he wants to. But other than that, as you know, outside of some of the playoff and if your team is still in season rules, and all that stuff. Once your team is out of season as a coach, you are allowed to interview fully and take and accept and start a new coaching job. Again, as long as it's a promotion, if it's a lateral move, then the team that you currently have a contract with could block that move uh, from you. So good question, Keith. Hopefully that explains all of that. 
uh, as much as I can here in this episode. I'm not a huge coaching and executive coach, like contract expert, but those are kind of the basics of it. So whoever the Washington commander signs their next head coach, that guy will start, uh, you know, uh, day one, like as soon as they sign their contract, they're on the clock. Um, turning down to Mike Alf from YouTube. So this is a question from YouTube from Mike. Uh, it says, now that it looks like Dan Quinn will be the head coach, bold, but, but some people agree. Uh, do you think the wisest move for the long term would be to pivot and trade back out of the second overall pick and stack the cupboard? Eugene Shen has been on record being a big proponent for trading back, and it seems like the sensible move after these recent events. So uh, again, I don't agree that, that Dan Quinn just is going to be the guy, but certainly could be the guy. Um, as far as trading back, so I'm I'm kind of always team trade back, to be quite honest with you, because I like more bites at the apple. And that's, I think, probably where Eugene Shen is coming from. I don't I'm not speaking for Eugene here. I have not reached out to him or asked him his opinion based on this question. But we talk about analytics, right? What are analytics? Analytics are trying to figure out the best route to go to have the highest probability of success. Well, when you're talking with the NFL draft where you find blue chip talent in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round, sometimes UDFAs, literally you could could find blue chip talent anywhere in the NFL draft. And honestly, it's not even so much more likely you're going to find it in the first round than you could in the second round, third round. There's blue chip talent all throughout the draft, uh, you know, more likely up front, granted. But really, the top 100 is really kind of where everybody likes to focus their energy and really some of them even the top 50. Um, and if you're talking about the top 100, well, if you go from having four picks in the top 100 to five picks in the top 100, then you have a better likelihood of finding a blue chip player in the top 100, right? That's just kind of simple math. And I'm sure there's more, you know, Eugene Shen is going to get into super deep levels of it, but that's just my basic, uh, you know, uh, football show host uh, math level of analytics for the draft picks. So yeah, I think certainly they could, you know what I mean? Could trade back uh, stock to cover. I think the question really all surrounds the quarterback, like at number two, with this quarterback class, with Caleb Williams, with Drake May, with Jane Daniels, maybe even Bo Nix. Like, Bo Nix is not completely out of the mix, guys, of being a top 10 pick. Uh, I don't know about top two pick, but certainly could be in the mix to be a top 10 pick. Um, you know, the top, the, the, the number two pick is going to be very valuable, uh, especially when you look at like a team like the New England Patriots, who probably want a quarterback. Uh, the, Atlanta, the Atlanta Falcons might want a quarterback, right? There are, there are numerous teams that might want a quarterback here at the top of the draft. If you're not, here's what I would say. If you're not in love with a player, whether it's quarterback, lineman, running back, wide receiver, I don't care. If you're not in love with a guy at number two, you need to trade back. Don't just take a guy to say, well, we're at number two. You know, there's this concept of like, well, you got to get a quarterback there because, you you know, your plan is to never be back at number two again. I got it. But if you're taking a guy, you're like, ah, you know, he's all right. We, we can use him. That's, that's not the right energy. It's not the right focus to bring in to a number two overall pick because – that's not the criticism you're going to take. That's not the pressure that's going to be on them. Like you're not going to get meh pressure on a number two overall quarterback. You're going to get maximum pressure on a number two overall quarterback. You're going to get maximum pressure on your coaching staff for a number two overall quarterback. But if you trade out, you know, let's say you trade to number three, the New England Patriots, they take, they take Jaden Daniels, all the guys and gals who love Jaden Daniels, they're going to hate you. They're going to roast you on social media. They're going to boo you in their living rooms. And all that. But you know what? Come training camp, everybody's going to be excited. If you don't tra take Drake May, same thing. You know what I mean? So, or if you really are in the mindset of, well, we got to take a quarterback top three, trade back to number three. If you're good with either Drake, you're good with either Jaden, trade back to number three, take the guy that you're good with. If you're not in love, trade back gives you more bites of the apple, gives you more chances to be successful. So there's certainly a lot of, of, of conversation to be had about that number two overall pick that we're going to have moving forward in our mock draft episodes and everything else. But that is kind of the general possibility of how they could certainly look at this. So yes, they, they could certainly trade back from number two, uh, not just because of who the head coach is, but just because of, you know, again, if you want more bites of the apple, well, you got to trade from further up to further back to get those extra bites. So great questions from everybody. We got some voicemails. We got some, you know, the very top of it, what do you do next? That's pretty much a question every Commanders fan is asking. Then we got a YouTube question. Love the diversity. Love the mixture. Love the research you guys are making me do. Great mailbag episode. Come back tomorrow. We'll have probably more news. Again, I got like six more questions in the mailbag uh, that I wasn't able to get to today. So we might just do a bonus mailbag. We'll see how the day unfolds, guys. But we will have an episode no matter what. In the meantime, you've got extra questions, additional future mailbag questions. Drop them in the comment section here on YouTube. Or text me directly by becoming a lock insider. Join subtext.com slash locked on commanders to do that. Don't forget, locked on has also launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. So go to locked on sports today on YouTube, subscribe to that, 
and check that out. Thank you so much for making me a part of your day, part of your routine. And until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.